of history, video game development has typically been funded in two ways, either with the support of a large company or by developers themselves as independent games. But over the past decade, a third option has emerged, crowdfunding. By allowing players to directly fund video game development, games that would otherwise not have been made have been released to the world. Today on Game Files, let's take a look at a brief history of crowdfunding. The practice first got its start in 2009 with the launch of Kickstarter, the most famous of all crowdfunding websites. At the time, the games being funded were small in scale, lacking in the millions of dollars in hype that would come in a few years. Games like Kentucky Route Zero, Cthulhu Saves the World, and Oregon Trail either barely met their funding goals or passed it with the few thousand dollars to spare. For nearly three years, this was how most video game projects on the site were funded. And then in March 2012, studio Double Fine Productions decided to crowdfund their latest game on the platform, and in the process, showed the industry just what crowdfunding could do. Double Fine's founder, Tim Schafer, had made his name making adventure games like Grim Fandango for LucasArts before leaving to make his own studio. The genre was languishing in the early 2010s. And so Double Fine decided to crowdfund a new game called Double Fine Adventure, with the comparatively high goal of 400,000 US dollars. By the end of its first day, players had already committed over $1 million to the project. When the campaign closed a month later, Double Fine Adventure became the most funded project in Kickstarter history, with over $3.3 million earned. The adventure game would eventually be called Broken Age and was released in two parts across 2014 and 2015. Double Fine's use of Kickstarter put a spotlight on the platform and other small developers took notice. Before Double Fine Adventure, around 100 video game projects started each month, a number that doubled after its campaign. At the same time, multiple crowdfunding projects received much more funding than originally asked for, as backers flocked to the platform to support new games. Double Fine's record for most successful video game project was broken later in 2012 by Pillars of Eternity, though it wouldn't hold the top spot for long, as the crown would change hands with each passing year. The rise of crowdfunding allowed for new games of all shapes and sizes to take form, yet one of the most successful and infamous crowdfunded projects wasn't a video game, it was a console. The Ouya was an Android-based micro console that raised over $8.5 million in its July 2012 campaign, becoming one of the highest funded projects in the website's history. While the console was delivered to backers in 2013, its crowdfunding success did not translate into sales. While many games were released for the Ouya, it took on so much debt that its parent company eventually folded in 2015 ultimately becoming a commercial failure and a cautionary crowdfunding tale. And that's the thing, not every crowdfunded game is a success story. While plenty of games don't get funded in their initial campaigns, there are plenty of others who do get funded and encounter troubles later down the line. Take Goddess as an example. Developed by 22 Cans and Peter Molyneux of Fable and Black and White fame, the project met its 450,000 pounds project goal in December 2012. Goddess was meant to be released for mobile devices and PC, but while there is a playable iOS and Android version, the PC version has been stuck in early access since 2013. By all accounts, development has stopped on the game, and many of the promised features will never see the light of day. Since the initial boom of crowdfunded titles in the early 2010s, more concerns have been raised regarding its viability. While some games failed to deliver entirely, others have delivered but failed in their execution. Other games have stoked controversy due to the length it's taken to release a finished project. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night took over four years after its initial June 2015 Kickstarter to release, but it turned out to be a great game at least. More infamous is Star Citizen a space simulation game that has raised over $185 million in crowdfunding since its initial Kickstarter campaign, and a final release is still nowhere in sight. Today, the crowdfunding boom has died down, but the practice is still prevalent. 
Many of the original pioneers of crowdfunding, including Double Fine, have been acquired by the likes of Microsoft, which does provide more stable and consistent funding. Yet without crowdfunding, we never would have played some of the best games of the past decade. It allowed long dormant franchises to return and kickstarted careers of some of the industry's most exciting developers today. Crowdfunding may have its risks, but it's left an undeniable positive impact on the industry at large.